afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Take a moment, pull back from that keyboard list up. I got my friend Matt Tuttle from Tuttle Capital Management. Matt, it's been a unique, uh, unique week overall, an interesting start. We saw Kramer talking about the Magnificent Seven there, and I was a bit worried when I started seeing Apple, Tesla, and the rest of them in there. I mean, those are some pretty big hard hitters, and we all know what typically happens. Jim says something, and they tend to go down. Well, that many big names, albeit mentioned at once, would seem to be a detriment for the market overall, but we did actually get a little bit of pop in the market, uh, the broader market overall. What are your thoughts on that? Are those the ones that actually have some Kramer, some resiliency? What's your opinion? What's your thought? Yeah, I mean, a lot going on with those stocks. I mean, what we're seeing is is just crazy where, you know, I saw a number where all of the returns of the S&P this year are those seven stocks. You take them out and the s and P's flat. Um, and, and I believe that. I mean, that makes sense. I don't think I've ever seen you know, negative breath like that, where you've just got seven names. I mean, it also goes to show the stupidness of, you know, market cap indices and looking at those to tell you what's going on in the market. And yeah, and I think it gives a lot of people an inferiority complex on their portfolio, because if you didn't have those seven stocks, you're underperforming. Um, you know, you know, certainly they're overextended. And, you know, I, I think we've seen a perfect storm where, you know, starting with, you know, NVIDIA's earnings, uh, the debt ceiling getting fixed, the Fed coming out and saying pause, jobs numbers being strong. I don't know what the catalysts are to, to make the second half nearly as good as the first. So I would be extremely, extremely careful. Uh, but I do think that whether these stocks go up or down, they're the dominant theme going forward. So like, you know, for example, and we're making some major kind of moves in S gym and L gym today, where we're taking 50% of those portfolios and, and tying them to those seven names, you know, L gym long and S gym short, um, just because I think that again is going to be the dominant narrative going forward. If I was going to go long, I'd wait for some sort of pullback. If I was going to go short, I'd also wait for some sort of pullback. Um, but, you know, I, I do think, you know, those are going to drive the narrative. And again, this is, I mean, we're in some strange times. You know, I've got to agree a thousand. These are uh, definitely some unique times, not just for traders, but for investors alike on it. Uh, do you believe we're kind of in that go and may sell away decisionary phase? until the end of the summer. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it almost seems that we have the common participant from like the mid-teens, the 16, the 17. Maybe I'm wrong on that. What's your thoughts? So I, I think there are a couple of different possibilities. The first is all the beaten down stuff, which we saw on Friday, rises up to meet, you know, the Magnificent Seven. Mm -hmm. Or all the kind of positive catalysts have gone Next Fed, you know, not this coming Fed meeting where I, I think they'll pause. The next Fed meeting, they start raising again. And, you know, we're back to playing that game of bumping up against 4,200 and the market sells off. You know, my sense is that we've seen the positive catalysts for now and that we sell off. You know, I am buying some of the beaten down stuff just in case I'm wrong about that. Um, you know, I'm also starting to sniff around the gold miners again after they've got beaten up. Uh, but yeah, I, I could I could see it going either way. But you know, my 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 gut is 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 on the bearer side at the moment. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, one for you on this one that kind of dives into the aspect of AI. The Chat GPT thing's been going around for a while. And they've started that little that little fund to trade alongside Chat GPT. You know, not a lot of AUM on. I think somewhere around eight million on there. But it really makes me wonder. I went and looked through the paper, and that data set was ran over forty five days. You as a professional market individual, there, if someone wants to bring a strategy to you and say, "Hey, we tested it over forty five days," is that even near a long enough time frame? Not my opinion, but yeah, you know, no. I just wanted to get a second thought on that. I would not be putting that type of capital towards a 45 idea. I don't care if it is an AI or not. What are your thoughts on that? And could that lead? Could that be the framework 
to lead to something else in the future. What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, no, that's not enough. And also I don't trust you know, anything AI related to the market, at least not now. You know, at some point, could AI advance to, you know, a, a whole different level? Sure. Right now, no. I mean, you know, look at this market right now. I, I mean, I've never seen anything like this breath before. You know, I would much rather have someone, you know, like myself who's been trading since the 80s, trying to work my way through this versus some computer trying to you know, make generalizations, rationalizations, connections that, you know, maybe were there a year ago or 45 days ago and not there now. I mean, I really think this is not the type of market you turn over to a computer, at least not with today's technology. I kind of agree to that a thousand percent on that. All right, Matt, before I let you go on this, uh, you guys got any big, interesting projects coming up that you'd like to give a 10,000 foot overview about? We, we do, um, you know, we're plow, plowing through with some of the filings, uh, starting to get some comments back. So hopefully, you know, we'll have something on those things. Those are our 2X long short arc, NVIDIA and Tesla. Um, we are also starting up a new RIA and it's going to be called Unwoke Capital Management. Uh, pretty shortly, we'll have a website up. It's hopefully this week. It'll be Unwoke Cap. Someone took capital, so unwokecap.com. And I do plan on offering a newsletter on that when it's up. Uh, it's going to be called the Woke Street Journal. So Ooh, I uh, like that. That is creative. I like yeah. that. And and I do have a Twitter site up for it right now. Uh, Unwoke Capital is is the Twitter handle. We've just been playing around with some stuff, but. Yeah, and, and we'll have some filings in there as well when everything is set up. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's sure to piss a whole bunch of people off. Oh, man, I, I cannot wait to see the Twitter storm for that one. That is going to be fun. And from a capital side of things, I mean, we see what happened with Bud. You know, I mean, that was a big hit on them. So we'll see one way or the other. But Matt, I want to thank you for coming on, dropping some good knowledge points of that. I really do look forward to seeing your projects coming up. And I look forward to talking with you again on the next one, my friend. Take care. All right, sounds good. See ya.